Hey, what's up? Welcome to the channel. My name is John and this is my review for the new 4K UHD from Vinegar Syndrome of Night Screams. In all my reviews, I'm gonna have minor spoilers, but in general, I'm gonna steer clear of revealing anything major or discussing the ending at all. But if you do like to go in cold, go and watch Night Screams and then come on back. I'm gonna go get a beer, go get a beer. Night Screams is a film from 1987 that on the one hand has a pretty basic high school storyline. The lead character, David, he's got scholarships lined up, he's got girls lined up, and he's pretty much viewed as somebody who's got it all. Son, I'm proud of you. Four year scholarship to Oklahoma. It's what you always wanted. It's what you always kept pushing me for, Pop. I'm not sure exactly what else he'd be up to, but I feel like the cinematic shorthand for it is that scene in Dazed and Confused when they ask, So you're not gonna go to law school? What do you wanna do then? I wanna dance. We know David takes some pills to keep his angry behavior at bay. And that does lead to a little bit of intrigue as the story goes on, and we end up at a party at David's house where a full-on slasher situation goes down. But that's not the only major plot thread going through this movie. We also follow these two escaped convicts who are extremely dangerous and volatile, and they wreak havoc at this cafe. Party time! And then we follow them on the run. They break into the house waiting for whoever comes back. You like the characters well enough in this film, even though people think he has it all, it makes total sense and is a pretty common trope that he would be in this situation dissatisfied and wanting something more. Meanwhile, David's new girlfriend, Joni, is having a hard time fitting in with the clique, but we can kind of sympathize with her as well. I've had a real ball. And then there's Russell, who's sort of the screech to this Save by the Bell group of characters. He's mostly a punching bag to a lot of the other characters, but there is a very fun scene early on where he is by himself in this abandoned lot where he just is dancing and cutting loose. The killers who are on the run are also set up to be pretty ruthless. We see very early on the leader of this gang has a very short fuse. It's sort of an early promise from the movie that some pretty scary stuff is gonna go down. You know, I heard the end of your nose is the same shape as the head of your dick. Really? What do I do? One thing that I think is interesting about this movie is that it is a hybrid between a home invasion film and a more typical 80s slasher film. I'm thankful that it leans closer to the slasher side of things. Even though home invasion films are generally terrifying and fun in that way, if you enjoy that kind of manufactured stress, for me on most nights, I tend to want a little bit emotionally lighter fare. Are you okay? Given these two options, a slasher film ends up being the lighter one. I thought you were with your mommy and daddy. That's where I'm going. Moment to moment, everything in this movie is pretty enjoyable, although it does have a slightly disjointed quality between these two major threads that are going on, even though both are well done in my opinion. There's also narrative purpose to this method where as the movie goes on, the way that the killings happen, it ends up seeming a little less likely every time that it could just be these home invaders. You've also got a party happening where everybody's getting totally wasted. So a lot of people don't know that there's even a killer on the loose until their time is up. One thing that's noticeably weird, so much so that Vinegar Syndrome puts up a disclaimer at the very opening of the film to let you know that this is how it's gonna be, is that to pad the runtime, some of the producers decided that it would be a good idea to insert footage of other movies into this one simply to make it longer. Now, I wouldn't call this exactly like a Franken movie where the inserts are especially convoluting to the plot. In fact, they're put in a rather easy way where people are watching television and then we just end up watching television right along with them. 
never bothered you before. Later in the movie, there's a scene where a guy and a gal are at this party and they pop in a tape that really just feels like an addition to extending the runtime of this movie as a way for the producers to just sneak a little nudity in. Sex, Russell. Sex. Sex. Look it up. It's in the dictionary. But the bigger offender is that right at the opening of this movie, you see a couple watching TV and it says, Now back to graduation day. And we kind of see a lot of this movie right at the beginning. So right away, I had this feeling of, oh no, is this, is this not gonna be that good? But once we get through that first scene and pick up where the movie was intended to start, everything goes back to normal and it feels completely fine. I wanna talk quickly about things that check boxes for me when I'm watching a movie, that give a movie automatic points just for having certain things, whether it's an actor, a location, a theme, just things you wanna watch movies about. In Night Screams, there are a couple of things that immediately win some points with me. One of those things is the opening theme music. So after this slightly awkward opening that's interspersed with the footage of Graduation Day, we get a title credit sequence that's set to a song that's kind of like an Axel F. Harold Faltermeyer, Beverly Hills Cop sort of a song. I really like music like this. This is the kind of stuff that I'm putting on a playlist. And also in the case of this movie, it kind of lets you know that the movie is probably gonna be a little bit closer to Electric Boogaloo than say Last House on the Left. And you kind of get the impression that this movie is gonna be a little bit goofy from that opening. And hearing this song pretty much confirms your suspicions early on. Another thing in movies that checks a box for me is seeing cool fashion and cool decor from the past. I really love vintage clothing from the 80s and early 90s, especially t-shirts and sweatshirts. I've been thrifting since the 90s. My wife and I share this same hobby. She doesn't watch very many of these movies, but as I'm putting videos like this one together, I do like to send her screenshots of things, of cool furniture and cool clothes, and that's something that she can appreciate about these movies. I think the standout garment of this film is spotted at the dance towards the opening of the film. If I'm thumbing through the racks at a thrift store, that thing is definitely coming home with me. The other quick thing I wanna share about myself is also sort of a public service announcement. So for most of the last decade, I've worked in kitchens and I saw something in Night Screams that I found most concerning. There's a character who gets out of the hot tub and goes to the kitchen to grab a bite to eat. So he just opens up a package of ground beef and starts just patting it up. While I'm a little bit concerned that he doesn't season this burger at all, I'm a lot more concerned with his complete disregard for food safety. Right after handling the meat, he pretty much just starts touching all the surfaces and utensils all around him and effectively contaminates every surface nearby. I for one think if more folks had survived the night, there was a lot of potential here for somebody to get really sick. Don't ever do that again, okay? I think this movie is right at home in the Vinegar Syndrome catalog and I'm happy that they're the ones that released it. I like that Vinegar Syndrome doesn't shy away from a movie that has these awkward inserts and even gives it the 4K treatment. They even go so far as to include an additional disc on Blu-ray that includes a cut of the film that removes these inserts. And that's something that I think is really respectful to the filmmakers who had intended to get it out this certain way in the first place. Creative. Rejuvenating. This is another case where I gotta take a second and talk about the new artwork commissioned for this release. So this new slip cover is by Chris Barnes and I think it's fantastic. Here's the front right there, and then here's our rubber ducky on the back. He really captures the anguished look 
on David's face that he has in a lot of the movie and, you know, just pick some of the most iconic stuff that he recognizes from the movie, like this long barbecue fork, which is even included down here in the logo itself. And also just picks out, again, this rubber ducky, just some of the stuff that watching the movie just pops up and feels the most memorable. And I think he made some really cool selections here. I think if you saw this at the video store, you'd stop in your tracks and at, at least pick up the box, but pro probably rent it back in the day. So I think it's really cool. Overall, I would give this movie a soft recommendation. I think if you're planning on purchasing it, you may wanna wait for the next sale. As far as being a subscriber, I couldn't be more pleased with it. I think even as I go through this pile of stuff from halfway to Black Friday, I suspect this one's gonna end up close to the top of the list. As far as being an effective slasher, I think it has enough memorable and varied deaths, especially the excitement of the opening cafe shootout. There's a really creepy, well-lit, memorable death of somebody who gets a plastic bag wrapped over their head. And then there's also the rubber ducky hot tub moment. That was a pretty good one. And I think the movie has enough separate threads going to be pretty entertaining the whole time and is generally effective scene to scene. Oh God, you scared me to death. And while I don't think that the inserts were the way to go at all with padding out the movie and making it longer, particularly at the end during the credits, there's like a really long interspersed recap of the movie that you just watched that feels pretty unnecessary. Tired of this bullshit. Ultimately, I do agree that the movie could have been about 10 minutes longer. And I think that if each thing was a little bit more fleshed out, this movie would have had more potential to be like a mini video store classic. We love each other. We do. <laughs> Thank you for watching this review. If you enjoyed it, I encourage you to subscribe to the channel. I'm going to be doing more Vinegar Syndrome reviews and eventually getting to some of those other labels. I also have other reviews, unboxings, and fan trailers that I've put together on the channel, so please check some of those out as well. You can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Those links will be down below. And I would love to hear your comments and feedback on this review and just generally what you thought of Night Screams. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.